Hi, so today I thought I would share with you um, a video of the steps that I do to get a panes of art window frame ready for artwork. So it's a lot of work, it's a lot of steps, but um, if you can get one thing from the video, a little trick or something, then it's worth it. So let's get started. So I've laid down my drop cloth and I've set up my easel. I've got my window, now let's go get our tools. Okay, here's the tools that I have and I'll just go through them real brief. I love purdy brushes. I've used them for, I don't know, 20 years or so. I, I will use nothing else, but I do have this one. A friend bought me one time when he made me put my purdy brush in some oil paint and ruin it. So thanks Uncle Herbie for that brush. Um, here is my finished coat that I use. It's any outside exterior trim paint you can use. I This is the primer that I use. Uh, it works really good. It's a quick dry. It's also stain blocker. Of course you have to have a, um, a screwdriver in case there's any things that you want to take off of the window. I always have this. It's not really a putty knife but you can use it. I don't know where my big putty knife went. Someone borrowed it I think and didn't put it back. I have this big old brush because this is what I use to dust the windows off. Um, let's see, this is what I use to glaze the windows. I used to use old glazing, um, like the old-fashioned kind, but um, I was talking with a friend who actually owns a window business, and this is what he uses, and I'm like, I think I'll try that, and I really like it, so this is what I use. Um, a couple scrapers. This is a handmade tool that one of my friends made a long time ago. It's kind of like a hammer. You can open cans with it. And I don't know what that part's all about. And then some pliers because, again, there's things in the window sometimes that you want to take off or pull out like nails. Okay, so um, I guess the first thing I do is I just check over the window. This is the front. For some reason, there's a someone put a coat of primer on this a long time ago so it wasn't me i mean this is how i got the window this is the front so i think i'm going to work on the front first and i'm going to take this off because i don't think the customer wants anything like that on there and i'll plug up the holes and then i'll just kind of scrape it go over it i think i saw a couple nails yeah right here i'll probably pull those out and then I'll put a fresh coat of primer on it. I might scrape off this old green paint first because that's probably been on there for a very long time and it's probably really hard to get off. So before I put any primer or finish coat on the frame, I'll probably scrape that off first. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the window and I'm just gonna scrape off I don't know if this is focused or not, but I'm gonna go through with a razor blade, scrape off all this extra green paint around all of these 12 panes. And then I'll take this off and I'm gonna fix these nails. I don't know if I'll pound them in or pull them out, but either way, and then I'll put a coat of primer on it. So this is how it looks before I, I scrape all that paint off the windows. Okay, so I scraped all that old paint off, or most of it, and then I just take this big old brush that I have, and I just dust away the stuff. So I don't know where I got this big brush. It's old, it's big, it's dirty, but it's great duster. So just kind of clean up the window. You don't want to have any stuff if you're going to prime next, getting in your primer. And I dust the windows too, like this. If you can see, I don't know, I'm so close. Okay, I think the next thing I'll do is take this off, see what's underneath it, and uh, take care of these couple nails here. All right, after a little bit of a struggle, I was able to work my way through the layers of paint to get the 
screws out and uh, here it is so it's bare wood under there so it's a good thing that I'm priming the whole thing because you have to prime bare wood before you put finish coat on it okay and then I'll plug up these holes too uh, next I'm going to tackle the nails okay well that was easy they were two short little nails they came out with no problem at all so I'll put the window back up on the easel and we'll get to priming one thing I forgot to mention before I prime because I also prime all the edges is you really have to check in these holes um, because there's probably a lot of lint and dust and whatever else maybe a spider I don't know but they're on both sides so I just take a screwdriver and kind of dig whatever's in there out uh, it's not fun but you have to do it because you certainly don't want to send a window to a customer and have a spider crawl out or have it look yucky in there or anything like that so just take care of it and be done with it then you can prime in there too Okay, so I got the window primed, and now I'm going to just let it bake in the sun and dry. I'm going to go in and have a bowl of soup that will help my back-to-school cold. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I'll show you a little trick. And, you know, speaking of primer, there, as you probably know, are paints with the primer in it. If you want to use something like that, you can. I don't. I don't think... I don't like them, um, but that's maybe just because I'm old school. But they do have paint with primer on them inside of it. It's like a mixture, like all in one. Um, so, I mean, if you're a fan of it, great. I'm I'm not, but um, I just wanted to mention that those are out there. And then here's the trick. Okay, so I'm going to put the cover on the paint can. That's no trick. Well, on the primer. Um, but then, instead of washing my brush, because I have to pot prime the back, I grab a, a sandwich bag, a Ziploc, and I stick the brush in there, and I just kind of roll it up and push the air out so I don't have to wash my brush multiple times. I just have to wash it once when I'm done with the primer. So I'll show you that. Um, if I can do it one-handed here. So I just put it in the sandwich bag and then I just roll it like that and the air comes out. I do not leave it sit in the sun. I bring it inside and I put it on the kitchen counter in the shade. So that's just a little trick so your brush doesn't dry out in between coats and you don't have to wash it every time. Um, just at the end when you're done with it for the day. Okay, now it's time to let the window dry and go have a bowl of soup. Okay, so here's the back side of the window. The back sides are always more work than the front <clears throat> because you have to deal with loose glazing that pops out. Um, so you'll have to redo that. It dries. At least I redo it. Not everyone does, but I'll tell you one thing that I do. <clears throat> when I see any painted windows or any artwork on any windows, I always peek at the backside because I want to know how much attention to detail people take. I mean, I want to know 
Did they do the backside? Did they care? I would not send this to a customer with the backside looking like that. And I'm, I don't think most people would. So, <clears throat> but this is just me. Do you have to do it? No. Um, but personally, I don't want something like this hanging on a customer's wall. Plus, um, it would bug the heck out of me <laughs> knowing that I left it like that. So you just have to go through, pop out the old glazing. I usually <clears throat> use a putty knife to, to do that. And then I reglaze whatever needs to be reglazed. First, I prime it. Then I reglaze it. So I'm going to pop out. And, and there's some scraping to do on this window too. So I'm going to pop out the old glazing, scrape it up and get it ready for some prime. Okay, so I have the loose glazing popped out and I scraped it. And when you're popping out the glazing, you wanna make sure, at least I do, um, that you can find your glazing points too. Here's the glazing point right here. That's what actually holds the window pane inside the frame and then you put your glazing around it and that's extra support and, and weatherizing too <clears throat> um let's see here's another one down here if you can see that just want to make sure that there's proper glazing points if you don't feel that there are you can put some in they're easy to put in you just grab it and i just uh i don't have one out here with me but i just use something like this to push it in wiggle it back and forth and push it in um, okay, I'm going to prime, um, and then we'll get to uh, reglazing. Okay, the back side is all primed. I'm going to let it sit in the um, sun. Well, there's a cloud right now, but at this temperature, it'll, it'll dry quick. <clears throat> and then I'll reglaze it, put a coat of primer over the glazing, and, and then we can start our finish coat. <clears throat> so, um, I think a lot of people don't realize, probably for a lot of artists who work with old windows, whether it's mosaic or paint or whatever the case is, there's a lot of time and energy and product, actually, that goes into even getting the window ready so you can start to think about the artwork. Like I've been working on this window for hours and I'm not even, this is not going to be ready for artwork for a day or two. So, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes on. So when you, um, that's why I think they say starving artists because you'll never, okay, I'll speak for myself. I'm never going to get the money for the time and effort that I put into one of my paintings. So... Um, there's just a lot that goes into it. Sometimes the artwork really is the easiest part. And that's not easy. I'm just saying it's less labor intensive. So um, when you see a price on someone's artwork, <clears throat> maybe before you question it, you think about, at least now I do, because now I'm familiar, <clears throat> like before I wasn't, I might have said, um, geez, that's kind of expensive. But there's always a reason. I mean... Um, sometimes the work that you put into a piece is beyond what you see when the piece is done. No one can really see what the work that you do beforehand. Because once it's done, it, it looks great. And you focus on the artwork. So, anyways, okay, we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and do some glazing. Okay, it's been reglazed. It's going to bake in the sun for a little bit. Harden that up a little bit, and then I can prime it, <clears throat> the glazing. Um, and then I wanted to show you a little trick when it comes to sealing up your glazing. If I can do it one-handed, I don't know, um, but I'm going to try. So <clears throat> a lot of people will, will buy um, plugs and different things you can put on the end of your caulk or whatever you're using that's in a tube. Um, this is what I do and I've done it for years. Here's a, the old part, but I just squeeze some out. Let's see if I can. And, and then, oh, before it falls off here. Oh, okay. It fell off. <laughs> um, 
I'll hold it up straighter. Okay, and that, I don't know, it's going to fall again. Okay, and then I just smear it around. Okay, I can't do it one hand with just one hand, but let me just do it quick and, I'll, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there you go. All I did was squeeze them out and smeared it around the top, make sure it's sealed. That's all you have to do. And then uh, that'll dry and next time you go to use your caulk or whatever you're using that's in a tube, you won't have any problem whatsoever and you don't have to go to the hardware store and buy you know anything to go on it. This is good enough and that's all I do and that's all I've done for years. Okay, window has been reprimed. And now I can put the primer away and finally wash out my brush. So here's what I use to clean my brush, Murphy's oil soap and a wire brush. <clears throat> the wire brush, um, I just you'd use in one direction, just like this to get off the stuff that may be dried on. Okay, that's as you're washing it. And then Murphy's oil soap helps wash it and also helps condition it to keep the bristles soft. Make sure you rinse it good and keep rinsing until your water's clear. Okay, so now everything is primed for the second time. Not everything, just the glaze. And I cleaned up the glass a little bit. And now I'm going to put a finish coat on the back. Sometimes I have to put two finish coats on the front and the back. So that's four coats total of just the finish coat. But, um... I just wanted to mention, you know, if you still happen to have wooden windows on your house and you want to freshen up the paint on your windows, you go about it the same way as this, except I would recommend not getting the paint all over the glass. I mean, if you can make a straight line with your paintbrush, that's great. If you can't, you can clean it off, but I don't worry about making a straight line with my primer I just don't care to get I just get it on the glass um, but when I put the finish coat on I like to keep that neat so um, I just wanted to mention that it'll be easier for you if you're painting windows on your house to be a little bit neater with the primer than than I like to be so okay now to the finish coat Okay, so the back is done, and now I'm going to put a finish coat or two on the front, but first I have to go pick up the kiddo from the bus stop. Okay, so I have one coat on the front, and that's enough for today. I mean, it's after 5 o'clock, so <clears throat> I will tomorrow put the second coat on, and... That's normally where I stop. I'll, of course, clean the window panes. <clears throat> but this customer wants a little aging added to the window. So tomorrow I'll do that as well. And then um, it can just sit and dry. And then the following day, I'll start to think about the artwork. But there's a lot of work that goes into this process, right? <laughs> Right. Okay. That's enough for today. See you in the morning. Good morning. So I put the last coat on the window this morning and I cleaned up the glass. And so this is the finished product. I do have two more steps to do for this customer, for this window in particular, who uh, wants it aged a little bit, but I will do that a little bit later. Let it sit all day in the sun to dry and then I'll start the artwork next week. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope maybe at least you could pull one thing from the video that you might have learned. Or um, if you have a completely different process, that's fine too. I think whatever works best for you is, is what's right for you. Okay, happy creating!